Hey, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, we are going to cover Greenbone Security Assistant, or previously known as OpenVoss. In the last video, we had covered the installation process, everything within Docker. And in this video, we're going to kind of dig into the software a little bit more and perform a vulnerability scan, covering the steps from setting up the targets, the credentials, and even scanning our network for the devices that are on um, within our home lab. So with that being said, let's get started. So after initially logging in, to Greenbone or OpenVoss, you're going to want to head over to the administration tab and under that tab, check out the feed status. In there, you want to verify that your feed is up to date. In this case, it's not too bad, but we always want um, the feed to be up to date. So we're scanning the most recent vulnerabilities. So in that case, we're going to go ahead and bring this Docker down and then we're going to go ahead and update and we'll show you how to update the feed. So if you followed the last video, you will have this all set up. So if we list out the file in this directory, you'll notice that we have the Docker compose file in this directory. So we could run Docker compose down with sudo permissions. And that's going to bring down each of the containers that are currently running. So now once all of the containers are killed, clear out our screen and we'll go ahead and paste in this command. So in this case, there's a typo there, but docker and compose dash F, which is specifying the file. And in this case, it's the YAML file docker dash compose. And then here we got the pull command, which is going to pull in the various images, the most up to date images that is going to be used in our containers. So we'll go ahead and execute that now. Of course, use pseudo permissions. Alright, so at this point, we had pulled in the latest images using that uh, command previously. And then all we have to do now is just bring up the docker compose so sudo sudo docker compose up dash d which brings up the containers in a detached uh, form so it's not within our session our terminal so we'll go ahead and let those containers start up and then after a few minutes or even seconds you'll be able to log in Head over to the administration tab, go down to feed status, and we should see update in progress. And now we should see the correct date. And today is April 18th. Uh, so this will take, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, sometimes longer, depending on how you went about it. Another way to go about this is if you just deleted the other images and then ran the Docker Compose, it will pull in the latest image. Um, but in this case, this command is just as useful as just pulling in the latest images and then running that Docker Compose file and bringing everything back up. All right, so while that's updating in the background let's go ahead and start with setting up our assets our credentials and stuff like that so the first thing let's go ahead and head over to the configuration tab and go down to credentials here at the top left little paper icon is where you're going to create a new credential here we're just going to say lab uh, if you had a comment you could put that there username plus password since we are logging in with a Windows, otherwise we have some other options here. And then we're just going to go ahead and specify the username and password here. All right, so now we have our credentials. So let's go ahead and head over to uh, create a scan that's going to scan our network for our devices. But first, let's head over to the configuration tab again, go to targets. Top left, click uh, create a new target. Here we'll just say lab target. Uh, we'll just do lab network. And then in the manual field, you're going to go ahead and specify, specify an IP address. And in this case, we're just going to use sidearm notations. Pretty much, um, we're going to get scan the whole entire network. So 254 addresses within that 192.168.1 address space. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and leave exclude host default, default, everything else pretty much default. At this point, we're not we're not really too worried about credentials because we're just going to perform uh, pretty much a live test or a ping test to see and sweep the network and see what hosts are within our environment. So go ahead and hit save. From there, we're going to go to scans, tasks, new task, and then we'll just do. lab network discovery and then in the scan targets if you had not created one you could create one here but let's go ahead and specify lab network we're going to leave these all at default and then we're going to head down and going to go to scan config and then we're going to select discovery 
and that's pretty much going to be it. So we'll hit save. All right, so once that task has been created and we're on that screen, you can see here at the bottom, we could see here at the bottom, we have the lab network. But first, let's head over to the configuration tab again, go to targets, top left, click uh, create a new target. Here we'll just say lab target. Uh, we'll just do lab network. And then in the manual field, you're gonna go ahead and specify, specify an IP address. And in this case, we're just going to use sidearm notations. Pretty much, um, we're going to get scan the whole entire network. So 254 addresses within that 192.168.1 address space. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and leave exclude host default, default, everything else pretty much default. At this point, we're not use, we're not really too worried about credentials because we're just going to perform uh, pretty much a live test or a ping test to see and sweep the network and see what hosts are within our environment. So go ahead and hit save. From there, going to go to scans, tasks, new task. And then we'll just do lab network discovery. And then in the scan targets, if you had not created one, you could create one here. But let's go ahead and specify lab network. We're going to leave these all at default. And then we're going to head down and going to go to scan config and then we're going to select discovery. And that's pretty much going to be it. So we'll hit save. All right, so once that task has been created and we're on that screen, we could see here at the bottom, we have the lab network discovery scan that we had just created. It says new. So if you just go over here to the right and click on the start button, and we'll go ahead and let that run in the background and then I will come back once that's finished. All right, so once that scan has been completed, once we're back on this tab, you could go ahead and click on the reports, click number one. This will show all the reports. Um, this is just one easy way to get to it. This is the most recent scan or the only scan that we had ran for today. So if we click on that, uh, you'll notice that we have some results up here and it's all saying zero. So if you click on results, remove all filter settings, that'll get, get you to the results and remove the filters. And this will show all the hosts that we had found within this network. Uh, all of this is just, you know, random devices, my Raspberry Pi, phones, this PlayStation in here, my router. You could also find this information by going to assets, hosts. And you can find all those here. So what we're going to do from this point is we're going to create a target from these hosts that were found. So at the bottom right, click this drop down arrow and we're going to say apply to selection. And then we're going to select which ones we want. If we want to do multiple ones, we'll select them all. And in this case, then we're going to go ahead and create target from selection. We'll name this lab assets. And then we're going to leave this from host assets. It's going to be 10 hosts. We're going to leave uh, everything else default aside from the credentials. And at this time, we have the lab credential, which we had defined earlier. And everything else is pretty much going to be left to default. So at this point, now we have a target named lab assets. And here are all the hosts included in that target. So the other only other thing that we have left to do is now run a scan against this target. So to do that, go ahead and go to the scans tab, click tasks. Again, we're gonna go to the top left, click on new task. And we'll just name this on scan. And now that we had to find those targets, Instead of hitting lab network, let's do lab assets, which uh, is the target list that we had just created with those 10 hosts. Uh, for, for now, we don't really need a schedule or anything. And then we're just gonna go down here and if we want the changes we can, but full and fast is good enough for now. It has a certain number of families by default enabled to scan for vulnerabilities, which you could check by, by going over here and checking out uh, one of these tabs that will have that information for you. I believe it's in the scans tab and then you could even make your own scans and, and enable certain plugins. Uh, but in that case, let's go ahead and hit save. And then similar to what we have done before, we're going to go ahead and go on the right side and just click start.
All right, and at this point, I'm not sure why it kind of stopped. I just kind of hit play again and it had started. So at this point, it is now scanning the host that we had to find within that scan. And we'll just kind of let this go out. It takes a while, depending on your resources and environment that you are scanning. So instead of waiting, actually, I'm going to go ahead and just walk you through the documentation that I had on the blog that I'm going to publish later today, because um, it does take a while. So if you once it is completed, you're going to go in there and you're going to view the results, pretty much what we did before. So under tasks where we ran the scan, you will click the one on the reports, exactly what we did before. And then you get in there and you see the results or remove the filters. And then here under the results, you see the different vulnerabilities for your uh, network. All right, so that's going to close out today's video. In the last video, we had covered the installation process. And in this video, we had covered all the steps necessary to scan your network for vulnerabilities. And in this case, we set up a discovery scan to discover all the assets on our network. And then we had just ran a default scan to scan these devices for vulnerabilities. As you can see, it is still running. I hope you're able to take something away. I do have some other ideas for this platform that you could tune into in the future. Uh, but with that being said, as always, never stop learning.